Hello everyone, my name is Ashif Chaz and welcome back to yet another One Piece card game video. So in this video, we are going to continue talking about the OP3 cards. And next up, we have the color purple. Uh, purple has a lot of very interesting uh, cards, all kind of based around Iceberg as a leader. So I'm excited to talk about them. Now I've spoken about all the other colors, red, green and blue in previous videos. And I'll continue to talk about uh, black and yellow in the next two videos. So look out for that. Also, I am going to be opening up a box or two of OPO3 Mighty Enemy on 11th of February, which is the release date itself. So look out for the video then. I'm excited to open up the new set and see what cards we actually get. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribing if you want to keep up to date with more One Piece card game content. Without further ado, let's talk about all the purple cards coming to OPO3 Mighty Enemy. All right, so I'd spoken about Iceberg as a leader um, in like the leader breakdown video as well as the tier list video that I did with Blackbeard TCG. Both links will be in the description below if you want to uh, have a little more in-depth discussion about the leader. But of course, this leader, very, very powerful because uh, on the first turn, you can Dawn minus one and then you can just play out a, a Galila company card, a character card that costs five or less uh, and then just play it out for free on the field. So that's the basis of the Iceberg deck. Although this leader cannot attack, it can definitely swarm the board early with big, powerful five cost uh, characters from the Galila company subtrade. So we're going to take a look at all those purple cards and see which ones are good. So starting with Kaku. Yes, uh, like same as the previous videos, the English official English translation is an out on the Asia region of the website. So this is just a basic Google Translate. But I do have the kind folks over on Discord who have translated every single card for more Uh Shout out to Helmsman Helio, the GOAT himself, for providing the translations. I am just reading it off. So if any of the effects uh, or the translations are not clear over here, I'll just refer it uh, on the Discord itself. So starting with Kaku, 5 cost, 6,000 power with the slash attribute with counter 1,000. And yep. He's part of the Galila company, so you can definitely play him out with Iceberg on turn one if you would like to. Uh, his ability is when attacking, Dawn minus one, this character gains Banish. So it's actually really quite good, especially in the early uh, turn of the games, right? Because you don't want your opponent to, you know, benefit from having the cards from their life in your hand. With this, you can like, prevent that from happening with uh, giving Kaku Banish. So it's a good uh, early play. But at the same time, I think there are better options for like the turn one, turn two play. Still, Kaku, very, very strong card. So we're just going to move on. Next up is Khalifa, 4 cost, 4,000 power with counter 2,000. So this is your counter 2,000 staple for the set for sure. Uh, at least for the purple, you know, Gilla company uh, cards. Uh, and her ability is when attacking Dawn minus one, draw two cards and discard one card from your hand. So, you know, if you ever need to filter out your draws, uh, you can definitely use Khalifa as an early attacker as well. Though, most of the time, it's just going to be in your hand as a plus 2000 counter. Next, we have Kiwi and Mozu. That's the official name on the translated version. This is the, you know, Frankie's sisters. Two cost, 4000 power with counter 1000, part of the Frankie family. This is your two cost, 4000 vanilla. Great artwork. Definitely great artwork. And so let's move on. Next up, we have Kokoro, 1 cost, 2,000 power with counter 1,000. And her ability is on play. Look at the top 5 cards of your deck. Reveal up to 1 Water 7 type card other than Kokoro and add it to your hand and place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So this is your 1 cost dedicated searcher for a purple decks. And it's really, really quite good. This is going to be a staple for sure. So no reason to not include 4 of it in uh, purple decks, especially for Water 7 Galela Company purple decks. So there we go. Definitely a staple. So let's move on. Next up, we have Zambai. This is your 3 cost, 2000 power, the slasher attribute. So Zambai has blocker and his ability is on play, Dawn minus one. If your leader has the water seven sub trait, draw one card. This is actually pretty interesting, uh, especially for, you know, purple decks that want to draw a cycle through. And, you know, getting a blocker out, even though it's like, you know, 3 cost, 2000 power, it's still good because you can draw off uh, this card. So, even at the cost of Dawn minus one, I think it's a decent card. Not sure if it will replace all the other blockers that Purple has uh, so far, but you can play Zambai if you would like to. Next up is Tau Stone. This is 5 cost, 6,000 power with counter 1,000, and his ability is on KO. If your leader has the Galila company type, add one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and rest it. So, it's on KO to get that ramp, but I think it's still a really decent card to play out with uh, Iceberg in the early turns of the game. And if your opponent deals with it, you get a Dawn back. So that's pretty good. Next up is Chimney and Gonbei. 
uh, 2 cost 2000 power with counter 1000 and blocker. This is your standard 2 cost 2000, 1000 counter blocker that purple can now use and it's searchable with Kokoro, so that's really good as well. I think this card will definitely see some play in the future if you are playing purple and you're playing the Water 7 you know, Galila Company deck. Next up, we have Polly. 5 cost, 6000 power, and his ability is on play, pay 2 dawn. Then if you have 8 or more dawn in play, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 4 or less. So Polly, you can't play him out immediately. You can, but he'll just be like a 5 cost, 6000 vanilla in that state. Uh, if you have 8 or more dawn, then you will benefit from playing out Polly because then you can get rid of your opponent's like blocker, some of the threats that you want to deal with. So I think Polly is really quite good, just not super early, uh, somewhere in like the mid to late game, Polly's Polly's really going to shine. I think it's great. It's a good super rare for purple. Uh, deck's very versatile. So let's move on. I think this is a noble favorite card for sure. Next up, we got Peeply Lulu. I don't know why they call it People Lulu here. The, the translation's a bit whack, but it's five cost, 5,000 power with counter 1,000. And his ability is Dawn 1 when attacking. If your leader has the Galila company type, add up to one dawn from your dawn deck and vest it. Out of all of the like five cost, 5,000, 6,000 power characters, or at least at least the five cost Galila company characters, I think uh, Peebly Lulu is going to be one of the best ones to play out early because once it's out, the next turn you attack with it, you get to ramp yourself. Combine it with the Galila company stage card, you're gonna not have a shortage of dawn and yeah people is just going to be one of those this is the i would rank this as the more meta defining card over poly for example because it's just it does what you want it to do you want to ramp up after you use the dawn minus one ability uh on uh let's say like iceberg so you can continually bring out your five cost galila characters with you know, Iceberg's ability every single turn, and then you wouldn't feel like the pinch of Dawn minus one if you can ramp yourself up with this card. So this is a great card, definitely like an like probably an eight out of ten. I think all Galila Company cards should, you know, strive to search this guy early or have him in your opening hand, drop him down, start ramping, do you do like Iceberg things after that. Really, really great card. Next up we have Mino Zebra. This is actually an Impel Down Prison Beast uh, character card. So, you know, Magellan players, you have some extra tools to potentially use in the future. So, uh, Mino Zebra is a 4 cost, 5000 power with a striker attribute of counter 1000. And he has Banish. And on KO, if your leader has the characteristic of Impel Down, uh, add one Dawn from your Dawn deck as rested. So, on KO, you get to ramp one. Similar to what we've seen before, it's a decent card for sure. So, let's just move on. Then next up, we got uh, Mino Rhinoceros. Yeah, there's the one. Three cost, 5,000 power, and his ability is on KO. If your leader has the Impel Down type, draw two cards and discard one card from your hand. So situational, because it has to be on KO. Um, you can bring it out early if you want to. I mean, now I believe like Sadie has more targets. Um, so, you know, Magellan players, if you really want to go all in into that Prison Beast, uh, Impel Down, uh, Jailer Beast, Impel Down type um, sub trait, yeah, you can use this guy. I think it's a decent card, but let's move on. Next up, we got Monkey D. Luffy. We have our purple Luffy, 6 cost, 7,000 power, and his ability is on play, Dawn minus 1, trash 1 character card with a cost of 5 from your hand. This character gains rush for this turn. So uh, I can see a uh, definitely a deck that plays this. I mean, like of course the Galila company will definitely want to play this. Be the like you're going for game and you need an extra attacker. You can drop down Luffy and Don minus one discard a, a, a one cost five. X. It has to be exactly a cost five character, and then it gains rush. So that's really good. I think it's good. Whether or not it will see a lot of play because I. It's you know you can't bring it out with iceberg, but uh, maybe you can include some copies in your deck to go for game if you need to with this monkey D Luffy. Other than that, I think it's a. I'm I'm curious to see if decks outside of the Galila company will play monkey D Luffy. Maybe even a Kaido deck because you can discard Queen for this effect to work, but may may not be the best choice. I don't know. We have to wait and see. To like uh, we gotta see the players experiment with this card. And, but I'm pretty sure that this card will see a certain number of play for sure. Though uh, it does ask you for a lot, like Dawn minus one and discarding a card. If it gets you the game, then it 
it's a pretty good card. Next up, we got Rob Lucci. This is the purple Rob Lucci. 5 cost, 6,000 power with counter 1,000. And his ability is when attacking, Dawn minus 1, rest up to one of your opponent's character with a cost of 5 or less. Uh, besides Peeply, this is the other meta-defining card of the Galila Company deck. This is what you want to put out early because you can just rest your opponent's blockers, start attacking Rob Lucci, start ramping with Peep Lee, and like those two cards working together will be very, very strong. Um, also, going for game in the late game, you can use this to rest blockers, or you can use it to rest, you know, characters that you might want to attack into. So Rob Lucci, definitely really quite good. I think this is definitely, you know, a 9 out of 10 card, very strong in the Galila Company uh, deck. So there you go, Rob Lucci, even in black, and now in purple, both versions very strong. Next up, we are going into the event card section of purple. This is Gomu Gomu no Jet the Gatling. A zero cost event card with counter. You can discard one card from your hand, or you may discard one card from your hand. Up to one of your leader or character gains plus 3000 power during this battle. And the trigger ability is to add one Dawn from your Dawn deck and set it as active. So, interesting enough, I mean, like, there's a few cards that has this kind of trait where you discard a card from your hand and then your your leader or character gets plus 3,000 power. Um, situational, yes. I don't see a lot of these types of event cards being played, honestly. Uh, I think, like, Gomu Gomu no Rain had a similar effect. Saw some play in Ivankov's deck, but it fell off uh, shortly after that. But you can still choose to play this. It might catch uh, people uh, by surprise at the cost of like discarding a card from hand. So you have to evaluate whether it's worth it or not during the moment that you want to play this card. Next up, we got Howl Dismantler Slash. This is a one cost purple event card with the ability main, Dawn minus one. If your leader has the Water 7 type, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of two or less. Its triggered ability is activate this card's main effect. So, you know, if like Zoro is still really quite popular and you know, you're playing purple, you're playing like Galila Company cards, then this card might be really good at preventing your opponent from like swarming you early while you are trying to set up all your five cost Galila Company characters. This card is definitely going to uh, be a metagame dependent card, but when it's, you know, when you have it and you use it early, I think it's going to be really, really good. And not to mention, like, just Dawn minus one and combining it with, you know, like, Peep Lee and all the other cards that we're going to talk about, it, you can get the Dawn one back easily. And you can use this to get rid of all the small blockers as well. So it's quite versatile in that way. I think this card is good, though it may not really see some play. Uh, once the metagame calls for it, this card will definitely sneak its way into deck list for sure. Next up, we have Top Knot. This is your two cost event card uh, with the ability main Dawn minus two. Return up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less to the bottom of its owner's deck. And its uh, second ab its trigger ability is activate this card's main effect. So yeah, similar to what we saw like in, in blue, uh, where you can return something um, to the bottom of the owner's deck. But because this is like a two cost card, you need that two Dawn minus two stipulation. I think it's good. I think this card may definitely see some play. You can get rid of a lot of things because it's four or less. And just getting rid of the card itself and not even to like trash or return it back to hand to the bottom of the deck means that you don't, you probably won't have to deal with it. The good thing about this card as well is that let's say you're playing against um, like the blue Nami deck, right? And then they have, you know, Nojiko, no, sorry, Bellamare, and then they have Usopp. You can send them back to these, to the owners, the bottom of the owner's deck. So not only are you the, removing a threat from your opponent's side of the field that contributes to their game plan, you can actually kind of stack their deck, even though it's by one, it's still. So I think that's really good. I think this card, may, if like Nami, uh, as a leader is really popular in the meta game, just put in top knots, deal with all of the Usopp's and um, Bellomares, and then you'll be fine. I think this card is going to be a good meta call towards all the Nami decks out there. And last but not least, it's the purple stage card. This is Galila Company. It's a three cost purple event card and its ability is activate main, rest the stage card. If your leader is Iceberg, add up to one card from your Dawn deck in rest mode. Yep, this is the new Onagashima, but for specifically Iceberg and like the whole Galila company uh, deck, this card is just extremely strong. But yeah, purple needed like Galila company or Weisberg needed a deck like this or a card like this to really mitigate that Dawn minus one ability. And the like 
to have an onegashima not only that not only that this is an onegashima that is searchable by kokoro because it is a water seven card it's really good let's say you do, you mulligan for it you don't find it uh you try your best to find it but you get a kokoro in your hand you can dig a little bit deeper to really get this card so you know the chances of you drawing this in your opening hand or at least on your like turn one or turn two it's exponentially high especially when you have kokoro this is an amazing card this is if not if not compared to like the striker stage card from red this is uh, without a doubt one of the best stage cards to come out from opo3 but there you go that's all the purple cards coming to opo3 uh the mighty enemies uh, uh, iceberg is just really cool as a deck i'm excited to see the iceberg players in the future it's gonna be very difficult to deal with and it's just gonna be really like uh all gas all the way uh, from turn one even then again like if you can find a way to kind of survive a few turns and then you know they, they make use of a lot of their dawns maybe that's their way to catch up so i'm excited to, to know what you guys think about all the galila company cards do you like them i think people is the best for me second being rob lucci uh of course you can always like switch them around but the fact that you can ramp with people fantastic and the fact that you get Onagashima that is searchable in an Iceberg deck makes it a really, really powerful deck coming in the OPO3 metagame. But that's really exciting. We're going to talk about the black and the uh, yellow cards next. If you want to see all the other colors, it is all in the description below. I am going to be opening up a box or two of OPO3 Mighty Enemy this coming Saturday, I believe, on the 11th of February. So I'm really excited to open it up and see what cards we get from our first opening of this set. That's it for me for this video. We're going to talk about, uh, I believe it's the black cards next. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.